Mother. Man. What's up, y'all? Joey from Goremonger FTA Records here, and you're listening to Murder Metal Mayhem. Spreading faster than a case of the clap in a trailer court. Able to shatter eardrums within a 666-mile radius. A podcast more brutal than all the rest. It's Murder Metal Well, fuck yeah. We're doing that Tuesday thing. What's going on, Chris? What the fuck is happening, Pete? We are fucking partying, bro. Hell you know yeah, why? dude. Episode 90, man. That's right. That's right. And we're not banned or canceled or anything. No. Nope. So. You can always listen to us because they're going to put us on lockdown. I'm going to be like, I'm sneaking out this bitch. (laughs) (laughs) They put me on lockdown and I run out of booze. You better believe I'm fucking out. I'm fighting somewhere, bro. (laughs) You're going walking dead on it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been psyched to do this one for a while. Um, I can't believe that we're closing in on the final 10 episodes, though, before we hit 100. Right. Hell yeah. In June. So that's going to be crazy. We got a hell of a show in store uh, for that one. We got uh, some stuff on that later. We got plans for that. And uh, we're doing this on St. Patrick's Day. How about that? A little celebration here in the Horns High. We Sorry. got a little surprise guest here with us, Chris. Who's uh, who tagged along with you tonight? Shit. Cashman, man. Motherfucking Goremonger. What up, Joey? <laughs> How y'all doing? Tag, Good, a, dude. tag along with me. Motherfucker was my ride. I don't drive. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, man. Good to have you out here, Joey. Always fun. Pretty ironic. Uh, the last time I was here for Paul and Carla, you also used the intro with me on it. Yeah, that that's true. Hilarious. That's true. <laughs> totally yeah. Uh, unplanned. So Yeah, it was unplanned, and it's always good to... Uh, to have you on and and to have this shit going on yeah i mean chris what is going on with this fucking pandemic happening and shit man we're just trying to fucking you know I do what so. we do and and do our podcast but it's just crazy it's like everybody's a, going fucking everybody's going bat shit crazy for shit tickets <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's for sure i mean i don't know when this is going to end i'm hearing you know, possibly into the summer. Don't really know. So nobody knows, but it's fucked up. But like you said, um, I'm just going to live my life, man. Like whatever. Yeah. I mean, I think, uh, you know, the reaction seems a bit much for what's happening, but I get it. People are, you know, at risk and some people are very, very passionate about this subject. So I just feel we should just keep fucking doing our thing. But definitely just wanted to recognize it, that we're living in some fucked up times with this virus and shit. I've never seen anything like this in their fucking lifetime. Like, this is fucking surreal, weird-ass fucking shit. It is really surreal. So, now last week was another wicked episode. The senior citizen killing couple, Ray and Faye, Chris. Pretty fucked up story. Got the comic here tonight. Yeah, dude. I see that. You bought that first issue of that Family Bones comic, dude. Yeah. I flipped through it. I want to check the whole thing out. Oh, like, yeah. Legit, though. That's fucking oh, yeah. pretty interesting. It's even got their actual picture. Like, when you look Google them and look at pictures. Right. Like, one of the main pictures on Google is, like, in the comic book. It's like, all right. This that's awesome. This is about that shit. Yeah, and it was written by her nephew. So, that's yeah, really that's fucked really up. like, oh, this is what my family did. This is where I come from. <laughs> come fuck with me. I told Joey I should get a hold of the guy and see if he wants to come on the show because that would be really cool. That man. would be fucking cool. Yeah, so uh, so we're going to reach out. And uh, so, yeah, we brought the comic along with us tonight. And uh, definitely uh, that was a good one. CK talking about uh, the band Toxic, uh, plus his usual metal updates. Uh, also, we got to open up that March Mayhem contest, Chris. That yes, was awesome. Sir. We got fucking uh, round two going today. That's right. Three contestants in there, listeners to the show. Um, and it's going to go on the whole month of March. But tonight, like you said, Chris, uh, second round and uh, down to the hateful eight. So we got eight of them going at it in four matches. So it should be brutal. It's going to be fucking great. 
Uh, since the basketball tournament and pretty much everything else in the fucking world is getting canceled, it's good to know that Murder Metal Mayhem keeps rolling the fuck on. You got 89 episodes before this to listen to. That's yeah, a lot of fucking go hours. Go check it out if you haven't. Dude, it's yeah. weird because me and Michael and uh, Derek were sitting around. We were watching the UFC fights the other night with nobody in the stands. It was really fuck that like is live weird. UFC fights with nobody in the stands. It wow, was so weird. That is really like, strange. I mean, they're announcing them like there's people there because I they're still broadcasting, so the announcements true. Like, still, when somebody's winning and shit, and you don't you just don't hear yeah the roar in the background. See, it's I so thought with those crazy. events, maybe I'm maybe I'm uh, cheating myself out of some royalty money here. But I think what they should do is gather the well. I was gonna say gather the fans off site and then pipe in the fucking cheering. But like that's still, but a they, they got to gather. That's what I was just thought myself. That that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, that fuck. It's a groups of seven. I don't know. I mean, it's Shit. fucked up, man. So yeah, I, I just don't know. I fucked. figured there got to be there's got to be some way they can get fucking some crowd noise in there. But if you can't get a crowd together, I guess that's the problem. It's <laughs> fucked up. So tonight though, we're gonna do another prison escape feature. Uh, this time going out to the state of Virginia and the Mecklenburg prison. Got Tex, yeah, raring and ready to go. It's been a while for it's been Tex. A minute for Tex, it was uh, the Texas Seven last time. Texas Seven, and and we did the Kenneth McDuff. Kenneth McDuff. Um, did he do the? Uh, he the did New the Mexico? bonus, Carlos. He did do the New Mexico prison riot. Yeah, yes, I thought he did that yes. one too. And uh, the only prison one he didn't do was the Black Dolphin. Right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Yes. And this he, is your fourth prison one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're fun to do. There's yeah. some good ones, man. Attica would be a good yeah. one too. Oh yeah. So uh, anyway, great to have Tex on uh, for this one. Uh, definitely a huge asset with his experience and working for the prisons definitely. down in Texas. Uh, CK is going to be calling in like always, schooling everybody. He's got a Chicago band on tap this time. The kind of the doom metal icons back in the fucking day. Trouble. Yeah, Trouble. I remember um, hearing that. They were, man, they've been around for fucking ever, man. I know they were around when I started listening to underground metal which would have been like 83, 84. Right, right. And they were around then. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely old school. Um, so you young fans definitely want to take some notes tonight because we're going to go old school on you tonight with some trouble. Also, uh, we're going to keep him on like we've been through the Mayhem segment. So we're going to be doing that second week of the contest. And we got our listeners, Chris. Uh, who are we? Uh, who's who are the three we've got in here ready to fucking go again this week? We got Justin from Lexington, Illinois. We got Stephanie from Toledo, Ohio. We got this stuff. We got this. Yo. <laughs> and we got Stephen from Chicago. Hey, I got you, Stephen. <laughs> and CK's got Justin. So three of us are going. Uh, playing each other every week and at the very end we're gonna see it's almost difficult to do it as we go with the scoring it really has to just play itself out and then we'll see how it shakes down but basically whichever one of us has the highest ranking ranking person that survives you know or you know how it ranks whatever one is the highest will win it so and then we've got 15 tiebreakers if we don't get it on the first one. So, God damn it. <laughs> so yeah, it's funny because a couple of us have the same number two. Yeah. Uh, that the number <laughs> ones are all different. So it, it's very interesting. It'll be cool to see it end. And either way, everybody's going to win, man, because you got some really good prizes for everybody. But of course, Fuck yeah, we do. the grand prize, Chris, is what? Get to do an episode of the podcast with Fuck us. yeah. Like Messenger, Skype, however yeah. you need to do it. And- be fucking awesome have a good fucking time yeah that's gonna be cool and we'll uh we'll, we'll guys... put them on a murder segment and then yep. let them pick it out of a group we'll give them a, pick a which list one and be fucking fun yeah I, that was your idea to let them pick the episode i think that's great right yeah so, I mean, no, that's sense. awesome like, we've got a list might, yeah. i mean fuck they could go through the whole list and pick something like, so boom uh, and if they even have their own idea that we don't have, I'd be willing to hear them out. I would definitely be willing so to hear them out. So we're always down okay, with we'll doing something. Check that out and talk about it. Yeah. So a uh, huge thanks to sponsor SpellboundEffectsAndArt.com. Tony Campagna just continues to crush it. 
with some intense Ed Gein inspired artwork. Joey, I know you love our lamp in yeah. here. I mean, I like all the pieces that you guys have gotten from him and yeah, you know, the catalog leaves a lot to be desired too. Oh, dude. Yes, does, dude. I love Chris, Chris been looking at that cowboy hat forever. That <laughs> cowboy hat. And then that skull with the hand going through the mouth was so fucked up. Yeah. Man, I love that shit. I may buy that cowboy hat, and that way I could just walk around the apocalypse with that on me, like, don't dude. fuck with me, bro. <laughs> dude, See right? the last person that fucked with me, man? They're, I'm wearing them on my head. The way people are freaking out right now, could you imagine if you walked into a hops with that fucking hat on? <laughs> oh my people gosh. would lose their <laughs> shit, man. Walking into the gas, you go, what up? <laughs> They'd be like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Who is that on your hat? <laughs> oh man so tony's stuff is just amazing spellbound effects and art.com support indie artists like tony and he's a huge supporter of the show more of a reason to uh check out his work Death. and buy something so all he, his artwork yes and a huge thanks to everybody out there listening we do appreciate it continue to see the numbers london was still in the top 10 the last time i checked as well as winnipeg manitoba up in canada so we get two foreign countries uh with cities on our top 10 that's list which is cool, fucking awesome yeah, so thank you canada, everybody yeah UK, canada's good to a, us so uh spread that shit like a case of the clap at a fucking trailer park man they got trailer parks up there I i've seen canada shows. of course we've seen some shows about that subject haven't we so we got a lot of shit on our plate tonight got joey in here with us uh got text coming up got six inmates who escaped from death row desperately trying to get away. So hopefully Tex can help us, you know, make sense of this shit because it's a crazy one. Probably one of the most original prison escapes I've ever heard of. I Very really like so. it. Yeah. So, Chris, uh, what yeah, do we need to let's do? Let's get man? our prison escape on. Jesus Christ, God. man. Dying dude. fetus, man. I fucking love fetus, wow. dude. First time ever seeing him was at, at the uh, Lafayette. Lafayette Club, yeah. dude. It was, Invert the like idols. 17, bro. Fuck. It was awesome. Yeah, that is, that is some sick shit. And uh, good to be back, though, man. We're in uh, in our murder segment. Got uh, Tex here with us. How's it going, dude? It's going real good, man. Happy St. Patty's Day. Happy yeah. St. Patty's Day to you, too, Yeah, sir. how Hell funny yeah. is that? Are you are you drunk yet, Tex? Are you starting <laughs> to tip a few back? Or? Oh, you know, it's St. Patty's Day, but in light of the current situation, I'm down here sipping on a couple of Coronas. Nice. <laughs> yes, sir. Nice. I, I, dude, I almost bought some, bought some Coronas to bring out with me tonight just for the fuck of it. But I was like, eh. <laughs> I, I had a couple the other day. I'm good with what I normally drink. <laughs> Very cool. And we still got, uh, of course, Joey uh, Gormonger in here with us. So, yes, Joey. Sir. And uh, we're going to be getting into a good one tonight. And uh, we have done a few other podcasts on prisons before. So if you guys like this topic, go and listen to some of the others. We've done Black Dolphin Prison, uh, and then the ones we've done with UTEX, New Mexico Prison Riot, Texas 7, and uh, kind of we've done other up. episodes kind too. Yeah, right. and then that Carla Fay Rewind we did with you. So definitely uh, always fun to have you on, man, because your input is, is much appreciated. So. I think I was on for the New Mexico I'm glad one to be too. on, man. I think so. Yeah, crazy. That's awesome, dude. And yeah, Joey, I think you were on that uh, yeah, with that think, one with Tex, Tex too. So, so, so yeah, that's awesome, man. A little family here at Horns High Studios. So, <laughs> and despite the uh, the apocalypse and all this shit going down, the murder metal mayhem train just continues to roll the fuck on. So, Boom. we're gonna do this one here. A little prison story it starts out in the state of Virginia. Um, where uh, their death row was housed in Mecklenburg Prison or in Mecklenburg County near Boys Boydston, uh, known as the Mecklenburg Correctional Center. So opened in 1976 
as a state of the art prison. It costs uh, a shit ton of money to fucking Yeah, build. back in the day, especially yeah, 20 like million. Seven, yeah, 20 yeah. million dollars. Shit. It was like the state of the art uh, place, according to the documentary I watched. Um, was, eventually closed, though, in 2012. It was like the Titanic, though. Right. Unsinkable, but guess what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Uh, you know, they had a decrease in inmates in Virginia's prison system, as well as an expensive maintenance cost. Um, and But what's going to go down in history, of course, about it was this daring escape of these guys on death row. Six inmates in 1984, so definitely a wild one. Uh, they came up with, I think, a pretty brilliant plan, um, and we're going to dig into those details tonight. It was pretty crazy. Some of the shit they pulled off was pretty awesome. Yeah, and according to the uh, documentary, it said it was the biggest escape ever from death row in, in U.S. history. Oh, I so believe it. Pretty crazy. Now, Tex, when I brought this case up to you, had you ever heard of it? Because, of course, you've got your corrections background here. Yeah, man, I grew up in Virginia. I was uh, 12 at the time. No shit. Um, yeah, and when they escaped, my grandpa was part of a hunt club. So all oh, of the local wow. hunt clubs. Are you fucking serious, quick. dude? Yeah. That's About insane. 30 miles from my house was a prison. Oh, my god! And gosh. my grandpa and all of his hunt club people got all their shotguns, and they just went out in the posse. That's fucking nuts, That's dude. fucking crazy, dude. That's, that yeah, is really scary. cool. But, yeah, <laughs> scary as hell. It had to have been. Yeah. Now, Chris, what about uh, you? Had you heard of this before we talked about it? Because we watched a lot of this true crime stuff. This one in particular until you brought it up to me? No, I had no idea, man. That's cool. No and I don't clue. know. I think I stumbled on it when I watched, like, a Texas 7 and I think it showed like other prison, other prison escapes, yeah, and I was like, "Oh, that looked cool," you know. But I really like this story. It's just it's very very interesting. Um, Joey, what about you? Had you ever heard of this? I had heard of. I didn't know any details, and until you had brought it up, the only reason I had heard of it was growing up in Connecticut. Okay. You know, at the I was six at the time or whatever, and I re remember the the news about the manhunt and the okay. big escape, but. I didn't really know anything about it, and it wasn't until you brought it back up that I went back and researched and actually understand, and shit, you know. Yeah. Right. I just knew there was, like, a, a big prison escape there. That's cool. Yeah, it's an interesting story, um, and definitely some really bad dudes involved in this one. I mean, they were all on death row waiting for their turn in the electric chair, so definitely nothing to fucking lose, which is, is yeah, bad. Yeah, might as well fucking die trying <laughs> I guess, but yeah, I mean, exactly. Um, you know, there's two brothers among the six escapees who were definitely the worst of the worst tech, some fucking awful motherfuckers, uh, James and Linwood Briley. Uh, just those names alone escaping has got to be pretty scary if you're around that area, man. Yeah, probably to this day, I could probably call up my mom and talk to her about it, and she would, she would tell stories. Wow, so, yeah, I mean. I know she was scared. Yeah, oh, I, bet. I mean, yeah, they, they said some you know, prolific, basically serial killers. Oh yeah, these guys were fucked up. I mean, they yeah. were serious pieces of shit. Uh, they went on a fucking killing spree with a third brother and an accomplice in 1979. They fucking robbed an elderly couple, tied them up before dousing the house in gas and lighting it on fire, um, killing a 17 year old boy, crushing his head with a cinder block. Uh, beat a 62-year-old woman, um, raping pregnant women. I mean, just some really fucked up shit. Yeah, it just uh, killed the kill. I mean, really awful. So I don't know, Chris. I mean, it sounds like these two were, you know, obviously some bad motherfuckers, but, you know, they should have been on fucking death row. I mean, They shouldn't have been on death row as long as they were. No, yeah, that's like true. They should they have never should... had the chance to escape. That's my feelings. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, the, the prison system, like of that. course, is what it is. But, yeah. When the you fact. do shit like that, yeah. they should have been executed quicker, you know, like Very they quick. do. <laughs> but that's another story, of course, it, it, for another it should day. Be, it, should be, it should have been in Texas, huh? 
Yeah, Tex, you guys it wouldn't have messed with Texas. them down there, that's for sure. <laughs> it would have been quick, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> now, while the Briley brothers were probably the worst of the worst, each of them had murdered, you know, to end up on death row uh, with a date to be with the electric chair. Others were Lem Tuggle. That's got to be the best fucking the, the hillbilly genius. fucking name Dude. I've ever heard. <laughs> Tex, <laughs> did, you didn't go to, a, to school with a Lem Tuggle, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Not that I know. <laughs> he Lamb sounds Tuggle. like a guy that needs to be on death row in Virginia. Okay. <laughs> My name's Liam Tuggle. I just fuck your old mama. <laughs> Earl Clanton, that's another one. Right. Derek Peterson and Willie Jones. Uh, five of the inmates were black. The only one that was white was old Lem Tuggle. So old hippo boy. Yeah, so big old hoss. <laughs> Dude, big old hoss. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tex, these are some bad son of a bitches. Uh, definitely not, you know, people anyone would want free and, and roaming around, which is obviously the source of this, you know, fear that you talk about. Yeah, I remember the news stories of, uh, you know, they get tips on where they were. Right. Um, over southern Virginia, and there was always rumors of rapes and burglaries and oh, all kinds of shit. So, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, uh, you know, got to be scary as hell. Um, as we've talked before with these prison escape stories, though, the inmates have, you know, nothing but time and can observe the way that the guards do their job and, and sometimes can find holes in security and figure out ways to exploit weaknesses. Yeah, I mean, when, we've done this before. Texas yeah, seven was the same way, you know, exactly. When you're watching the guards that close and if there's certain one, nothing against you, Tex, just of saying, course. if yeah. there's certain ones that just <sighs> skip part of the process that they're right. supposed to go through. And right. they notice they do it every time. It's like, okay, we got that opening. We got that opening. I mean, I can see how it works. Yeah, I mean, Tex, right. the training has got to be intense uh, for the corrections officers, I'm sure, and how they're supposed to do what they do. It is, but, you know, you're always going to have those that they don't do anything by procedures. They just do what they want to do. Oh, they're there uh, for a paycheck. I was just going to say they're there for the paycheck and don't give a shit. Yep. Yeah. So these guys are able to find their ways around the security, um, and they were very smart about things. They handpicked who was going to be participating in the escape based on the size of the guards and the uniforms they were going to get, you know, so that they would look legit. Um, definitely not stupid. Um, and like in one of the documentaries, like the guard straight up, like, he asked me what size uniform I wear, and I told right. him. I think about like, hey, Tex, if, what, if, you're, if you're on duty and one of the inmates is asking you, hey, what size uniform do you wear? You're you're just gonna let it go and tell him what size, right? And just walk away. Is that what's gonna happen? Hey, what are you wearing? Khakis. <laughs> nice yeah i thought that was funny though like he didn't see anything yeah, wrong with telling not them know that. they're trying to make a plan asking people in or guards what their sizes are right right um so they're definitely not stupid uh willie turner and an inmate uh who was really good at making weapons um just about hide them anywhere he bragged about uh making a key for every cell he was ever in. I thought that was fucked up. Um, yeah. And he was suspected to be the brains behind the operation. Um, but due to a pending appeal, he decides not to go with the others, and he stays behind. So And he left a journal of, like, of the whole thing, too. Yeah, he That's did. That's who that was, right? The, yeah. Yeah. Um, now, Chris, I know we've talked about it on here before, but you've done you know some time in, in county, um, are inmates even in that situation thinking about trying to break out? I, I mean, mean, not in county. I don't know, Cashman. You've been to the joint. How many times you fucking think about right. busting out of that bitch? <laughs> I mean, I think if you put any person, in, it's going to depend on the situation too. Because even if you're in county or something, if something's happened with like your family, you right. want to get out. It is so fucked up not to be able just to be there. Right. Like that was the hardest thing for me being locked up. Was like certain parts of your life you just you have to deal with the fact you're not fucking going to be there for it you're right. not going to be able to help out with it you're where you're at and that's they're it. gonna have to figure it out but it's so fucking stressful yeah. that especially i don't because i don't have you know i don't have kids and shit but i could see somebody in that situation you know taking more extremes to really consider getting the fuck out right, right. you know so. but these guys just wanted out to be out right right true 
Yeah, no. But no, I get what you're saying about fucking. Everything. I mean, these guys also. You gotta think these guys also wanted out because they have the fear of they're gonna die over there. Right. Too. Exactly. So, they right. know they're gonna die soon. Yeah. Yeah. Tex, did you want to chime in on that conversation? Oh yeah. I mean, uh, you know, the ways we that we you know combat stuff like that is we do cell searches. Um, we have informants because there are those like long term. Uh, sentence people, um, they don't want to cause any type of, uh, any type of situations or anything. So they inform on whoever's going to do what. And then also like death row, they always move. Uh, I think it's like every three weeks now they move. So, so oh, they don't, okay. uh, really yeah, they don't that get, way, that way they're not, I, not that too makes comfortable. sense. Like death row, like moving yeah. to the new house too soon. Right. Yeah. Now, Tex, I mean, I know these escapes are rare, but uh, do corrections officers foil escape plans often and we just don't hear about it? Or is it something, you know, that makes for more of a sensational movie or a TV show, but isn't really something that happens much? I think most of the guys that are convicted, like I was saying, they they just want to do their time and get out. That's like probably 95 percent. Right. And then you get the people like the Texas Seven or these Briley cats, you know, they don't have anything to lose, especially the Briley's and these guys, Earl Clanton and uh, Lim Tuggle. They're going to get out and go do their business. I mean, they're going right. to die anyway. So right. They might as well. Might as well die yeah. trying to be free or yeah. like whatever. Fuck it. Yeah, pretty yeah. much living in the now and just saying screw it because I'm going to die anyway. So. Now, on the night of May 31st, 1984, they begin to act on this plan. Uh, they convince the guards to bring them back, uh, a few of them back, to, into the prison. The rest were on the yard. Um, yeah, they were doing uh, two of them. One complained that he like had a knee, a injury, knee injury, injury or something. And the other one said he had to use the fucking bathroom. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, they get them back early. And I know in some of the post-escape discussions, they say... You know how that was definitely a, a breakdown. You're not supposed to separate the inmates. Like if one goes in, they all go right. in at the same time is what they were saying. Yeah, you know? and it also and messed up their like, counts, right? Text, is that, yeah, messed up their count. Is that true, Tex? Like uh, if you're taking inmates in, do you take individual ones in like that? Like in a high security like that? We do. Most of the time where I work, um, I work in administrative segregation now and we escort one uh, inmate at a time. Oh, do you? But if you're, yeah. But something like this situation, you would escort them all at the same time, and okay. you would also uh, like a constant count. Like if I have ten, I'm going to use my fingers. And it's not that hard to keep up with ten. No, inmates. it is not. Right. So, I mean, apparently it was hard for these guys. Uh, yeah. if, if you can miscount 10, you're yeah, fucking that, stupid. Because that one <laughs> goes into the bathroom, uh, Earl, yeah. goes into the bathroom and locks himself, you know, gets himself in there, so they miscount, so they don't even account for him not being around. And then an inmate signals to Earl, who's, you know, jumps out of there, and he gets into that control room because that guy left the door propped open because they had observed yeah. him doing that. So that's he all from that the, watching. the control room door like he's supposed to, so right. he's hiding in the bathroom. With, yeah. And uh, one of the other inmates hollered at him like, hey, he's out, and he jumped out and tackled, dude, and took yep. control. Yeah, I mean, and then you've got, you know, the, the main hub of that whole area in their control and that's definitely fucked up uh there was a female nurse giving out medication to inmates uh who got caught up in the mess and narrowly escaped uh you know major attack they by several start, inmates yeah, they were I starting they were to mess starting, with her somebody was like no motherfucker this ain't what's happened we got right. this agenda right Fuck that yeah so that saved her there but damn that's just I don't know, Tex. I mean, I'm sure you see it a lot, but the females working in the male institutions, I don't know, man. That just that just doesn't seem like a very good idea. Well, the way it is now, there's not a lot of blind spots. I mean, assaults and stuff and rape still happen, but uh, the staffing and, and everything right now is set up to where, at least in Texas, where we have enough staff where we can watch each other. So it's not that bad. 
That's good. Yeah, that's good. At least you guys are protecting each other. Fucking don't need somebody like Cashman over here fucking tacking you <laughs> in the goddamn joint. <laughs> that's just, these are jokes. These are jokes. <laughs> This story reminds me of the Texas 7 uh, story we did because they're able to pick off the guards one at and, a time. Uh, no, I, it, when I was started researching, I was like, it almost we seems like it's the same one, right? It's like, very okay, similar. Is, yeah. I wonder yeah. which one came first. Which one of the two came first? I didn't think I about think that. I think this one happened first. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Yeah, I think you're right. And uh, you know what? Is I think. Uh, if I if I remember right, that both of these cases they did find a journal for both of those, right? Uh yeah. I in the Texas they, Seven, yeah. I think they found a manuscript or they something. They did about find it. the manuscript in the Texas Seven, yeah. Yeah, they did. So that's fucking crazy. So it's yeah, it, it is weird. Like I said, when I started researching, it's like, why does it sound so <laughs> fucking familiar? Yeah, because there are so many similarities. Um, and one of the guards that was interviewed on the documentary I watched said that he believed them to be real guards because they looked so much the part and they had right. the uniform uh, that they fit. They were clean shaven. And yeah, shit, they whatever. cleaned up. Uh, one by one, they're able to call the guards on prison radios to coming up with reasons to get them on the you know death row where they would be abducted and stripped of their uniforms. So they were very you know systematic right. about it. Uh, Joey, these guys definitely, you know, pretty smart the way they had this thing pretty organized. Right? Uh, it reminds me like, you know, we're talking about how they sit back and watch all this. And, right. You know, see the uh, the opportunities and the mistakes that the guards make or whatever. And it reminds me so much of stories of uh, crocodiles and alligators and how they'll watch a campsite for fucking days. Oh, wow. To get the routine of somebody. Yeah. You know, oh, wow. And then to attack them at the perfect time oh that's wow i didn't crazy. realize that oh, that's fucked up so it kind of remind the predatory aspect yeah, of yeah. Nice no, people, yeah it makes sense know. yeah it makes sense yeah tex there had been talk around the prison about a possible bomb threat uh, but that was made up by inmates as a distraction um and also became part of the plan because you know when they brought up the bomb on that night they escaped you know that was something that they had been looking for so i think that made it sound more legit i mean don't you think so I think it was in this situation. Uh, I would have probably used like a a fight in another part of the prison as a distraction or something like that. But oh, sure. It, it, it worked for these guys. Yeah, it sure did. It was just kind of crazy because you think somebody tips them off that somebody's the, making a bomb, a bomb and they're going to escape. So they do yeah. all these you know searches and searches and don't find anything. And then this happens. So then the guards are like, oh, shit. You know, they yeah. had been looking for a bomb. So... To me, it seems like, yeah, it kind of made sense. It's just kind of crazy how it worked out. Like the fucking what they used for the bomb, though. You, oh, like my If God. you're searching the goddamn cells. <laughs> a TV. <laughs> you got a fucking TV. I mean, I know, like, it's not a huge TV, so it's not something big. But still, at the right. same time, like, how are you not going to notice if there's a bomb? I mean, yeah. I mean, take every precaution. I get it. But, yeah. Damn. I think it was just the way it went down. It just seemed like yeah, it made sense. The way you know, they just went did into it. Motion it. It was like the perfect storm. I think any little wrinkle in this, this thing would have never happened. You know, they just had the perfect situation that came up, and they were smart. Um, so, you know, they've already got this thing going with the with the uh, bomb. So, I think that maybe was was part of the reason why it was able to get pulled off. Um, you know, they dress in these guard uniforms. They put on the riot gear, covers up their identity even more. Yeah, I thought that was uh, kind of crazy, too. They were yeah. got the riot gear, face yeah. masks and everything, so it covers yeah. their faces. Totally. And then they got that fire extinguisher, Chris. And what did they do with... Uh, what kind of they... sprayed the extinguisher around the TV covered in a blanket to right. make it look like it was smoking. And everybody just freaks out like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> Everybody left. Yeah, I mean that adds to the urgency. Somebody says there's a bomb, and it's about to go. It might go and up, it's and it's smoking, smoking. And some yeah. dudes in riot gear. I'm like, get it the fuck out of here, you know. And that's pretty much what happened. Um, you know, they've got a van that pulls up, and they just jump in and drive the fuck out, man. That is just crazy. Yeah, it's fucking nuts, dude. <laughs> like. Now, Tex, can you explain to our listeners uh, what a sally port is? Because I know that's how they got out. And I've worked in prisons before, 
and have had to deal with going in and out of those. Um, but can you let other people know uh, what that is? Because they reference the Sally Port a few times in this story. Yeah, Sally Port is a secure location that has one door on one side and one door on the other. So you open one door, but keep the other one closed. Right. And then you the people or the vehicle goes into the Sally Port and you close the first door and then you search the people or the vehicle and anything in the vehicle inside the Sally Port. Once that is clear, you can open the interior gate and let the people onto the facility or out the other side. Right. Now, yeah. this situation, <laughs> they, they convinced the person to open both at the same time. Yes, right. they did. Yes, they did. What do you think of that? I mean, I know it's a bomb, but man, it just yeah, it's supposed to be a bomb, but it's like corrections officer 101, like you don't open both of them at the same or is there a provision for that, Tex? I mean, would that be a plan if there's a bomb, you open them both up and let them out? Uh, no, not in Texas. Um, we <laughs> not learned, in Texas. <laughs> we learned from this this incident and we learned from the Texas 7 Right. Uh, yeah, we don't do any of that stuff anymore. That's fuck good. Around. Yeah, that's not good. fucking around. But that's what's so crazy yeah. about like the prison escapes is it's kind of like an escalation, and you keep seeing new schemes coming up. Right. Because you think way back in the day, John Dillinger escaped with a piece of wood and some shoe polish. Right. And he made look like a gun, and you yeah. had out of right. And you know, and the, the escalation to now, these guys have fucking riot gear and, right. and making a that a, is a fucking and crazy. Like, the way the difference yeah, is, though, it's dude. Like they just keep coming up with idea after yeah. idea, and and in hindsight, it's like holy fuck, how'd they get away with that dumb shit? But it's like, right to those people, they're like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty clever stuff. I mean, all the prison. Escape stories, escape from Alcatraz is yeah. extremely fascinating. Um, I just think these stories are, are neat, and I think it's just a matter of, you know, idle time and all sorts of, you know, devious shit going on, and these guys come up with some pretty creative shit now and then. That's for sure. Um, they should probably use that knowledge to not do dumb shit. Yeah, that's what we <laughs> talked about one time, is these fucking guys should start a damn business or like, something. Come on, like, man. The <laughs> they just get wrapped up in some bad shit. So, at 10.47pm, yeah. uh, the six inmates left the prison in a van uh, before anyone had a clue of what really went down. It took them less than two hours from when they started this to when they actually got out. Um, all of the that, six dude, it took them like less than three minutes to get the first guards like yeah penned up yeah like, they were they were minutes. quick about it but it's they were systematic crazy. and got it done and were able to get out of there unscathed uh, all six combined though were doing time for killing a total of 17 people as you pointed out chris so jesus christ uh chris what do you think about the idea that the you know with this fake bomb i mean that was pretty ingenious i think the way they did it no, I think, uh, like you said earlier, like the fact that they started a rumor like weeks earlier. Right. That way, once they took control of everything and they had the uniforms of the other guards on, they had somebody, another guard come in, or they were on the radio saying, we got a bomb. Right. Like, it made sense. Like, oh, we've heard rumors about a bomb. Right. But at the same time, how could you not notice something like that? Yeah, you would think when they were tossing those cells, they would have found something of that size. 100%. You know, that's what you're thinking. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm totally in but agreement no, with you. It was a fucking goddamn great idea to use a bomb tactic. Yeah. The way, like I said, the way Yeah, because it, it freaks the... people out, man. You say the word bomb and it's smoking. You can't say bomb on an airplane. <laughs> That's right. <Yep. laughs> now, a governor or the governor calls a state of emergency. The National Guard is called in. Choppers are in the air. The media is going crazy. Um, definitely makes the prison system in general look bad, especially in Virginia. Uh, the inmates uh, drive into nearby North Carolina. Uh, they ditch the van in a schoolyard like a where some trees were in a grove of trees. Yeah, like. Backed in, that, but it was kind of obvious. They should have made it a little bit yeah, more like discreet. Yeah, like the aerial you know? video, you see, like it's backed in with the whole front end sticking out. Yeah, like, it's goofy. It's yeah, it looks odd. Weird. But they might have bought a little bit of time if they would have hit it a little bit better. But uh, they can't agree on uh, you know what they're going to do next, so they decide to split up. 
and the police realize what a mess they have on their hands with these violent inmates. Uh, now, back at the prison, uh, they're trying to figure out you know, clues on their escape. They're going through the cells. They don't really find a whole lot. They find some shanks. Um, but, you know, with nothing to lose, these fuckers are dangerous and citizens. Yeah, they're like, dude, they're freaking out. Like, like six uh, convicted Tech said, murderers fucking ready to go. Yeah. I mean, they're, you know, citizens are concerned. They're arming themselves. The gun stores are clearing out. Um, people are on edge, man. Yeah. It was fucking insane. Dude, uh. Hey, Tex, like, so why is that, why do you think they split up as opposed to the Texas 7? Uh, do you think it, do they always split up, or do you think, do you, which do you think is better, stay yeah. together? I think it's better to stay together. Um, and I was, I read an article when they called Lim Tuggle. The reason they split up, I think it was him and who Jones, right? Yeah. I think, yeah, I think, I think so. Uh, uh, his quote was, um, I'm the only white guy, and they made me sit in the back. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> for real. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that was That's, That's funny. funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, whatever, fuck you. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think it's better to stick together, at least for the, you know, the, a little bit, and then uh, let, every, let everything calm down and then split up. Yeah. I think that's how the Texas 7 was gone for so long as they stayed together. So nobody was able to do dumb shit. Right. You had the brains kind of keeping an eye on everybody. Whereas if they're all split up, you know, all it don't takes know what's going to happen with this person. Dumbass like fucking Earl Clanton and fucking Derek Peterson are caught at the <laughs> laundry mat <laughs> in Warrington, North Carolina. They're seen by a local cop. Who's driving by sees one of them in the Dude. prison guard jacket, but yeah, he's, he's still wearing the he's prison wearing fucking it. shit. How fucked he up is that? He ripped the patches off though, guys. I mean, he was thinking. Yeah, he's like, you know, I'm cool, man. What an idiot. Like, no, it's the same color, same cut, same everything. Like, you can't steal anything off a clothesline somewhere, right? You know? Yeah, because it's like the next day, you yeah. know. Now, I Dude. thought it was funny though that they were eating wine or drinking wine, wine and eating and cheese. cheese. It's like, oh, we're laundry. classy now, motherfucker. <laughs> Sit in the laundry. Your man, not in prison. I mean, you come out of prison, you go to a fucking convenience store. Who the fuck would buy wine and cheese? Wouldn't you be buying like booze. Slim Jims and right. Hostess cakes and Big shit? Big like, Macs and dope? No, nah, they're like <laughs> Big Macs and dope. No, nah, they're like, give me some of that Booms Farm and some of that American <laughs> slices, yo. <laughs> yeah, they didn't say what kind of cheese or wine oh, it was. Oh, you know it was a box of wine. <laughs> you know it was a box of wine, bro. <laughs> oh, God. I just thought that was, like, so, that was so funny. So stupid, Doing dude, your like, laundry? Da, da, da. <laughs> 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 oh my god so should have had that fucking coat in the washing machine motherfucker. Yeah, right. <laughs> tuggle jones and the two briley brothers uh, stole a pickup from somebody's driveway uh the briley brothers are taken to philadelphia where they're able to connect with an uncle who actually got them jobs at a garage under assumed names uh, Tuggle and Jones, though, plan to escape into Canada, uh, but <laughs> they, they only made up. it to Vermont. <laughs> they fucked yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Six days after their escape, Tuggle is busted stealing 80 bucks from a souvenir shop. <laughs> well, no. They fucking goddamn <laughs> went to that shop before. Right. And then he went back and went the, after he left there. Yeah, he went the wrong way, like 200 miles south <laughs> instead of north. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> and they're right. like, you know where that shop was? You were like five miles away from oh, the goddamn yeah, Canadian right border. Yeah, he was right <laughs> there. Yeah, he was right there. Whatever, dude. You know, I guess I'm fucked. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what they made him sit back. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. I thought it was funny, though, when they actually, because they, like, chased him a little bit, whatever. And when you finally pull over, you get out, and he's like, yep, my name's T or, uh, Tuggle. I'm wanted in Virginia. And, like, they just got out, like, going back to prison. <laughs> like, didn't fight or nothing. Not much else you could do nope. about it, you know. Um, and then Jones eventually gives himself up the next day, only a few miles from the border. He's cold, hungry. Getting bitten up by flies. Out he was all tore up. Shit. He talked to his mom, who convinced him to turn himself in. Um, I mean, that's a good mom. Like, come yeah, on, man. Yeah. Because she knew they'd fucking wind up killing him. You know? so yeah. 
you know, your your mom's always going to want you to do the right thing. Fucking right. Or at least you would, unless you're Henry Lee Lucas's yeah. mom or something well, like that. I mean, <laughs> then your mom don't give a shit. That's right. So the police are looking into families of the remaining inmates, trying to find places that they may go. Uh, now, Tex, it figures that the most devious of the group, the Briley brothers, are still out there on the run. Uh, they're the last ones to get captured, man. Yeah, with the connections they had and the families, and then, you know, them giving them aliases and giving them jobs. Yeah. Was that yeah. Uh, Lucky and. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, they had different. Yeah, L- Lucky was one. Lucky of them. and Slim? Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Something <Yeah>. like that. <laughs> So after eluding capture for 19 days, uh, the Briley brothers are taken into custody under the FBI uh, or after the FBI put a tracer on their phone. Uh, I know they go through texts like the prison call records, but the phone numbers didn't match. So they were giving them wrong numbers or something like that. I I remember hearing in one of the documentaries. Yeah. Uh no, I didn't see that one. Okay, yeah, I can't remember which one it was, but it yeah. said something about when they went through the records like they from the prison. Like certain numbers, and they weren't the same. They weren't like, they the weren't same numbers. The like, same they gave number. them fake numbers. They were giving numbers. them fake, fake names or whatever with yeah. the number they were calling or something like that. Yeah, it was kind of weird. But so the they, one that got put together, like, a re- actually got put together was their uncle that right. lived there. Yeah, the uncle showed up on there, and that's how they were able to find right. him in Philadelphia. Um uh, all of the six inmates are taken back to Virginia, uh, heavily guarded, of course, $10 million bond on a- each one of them. Uh, I'm sure, though, that they were rock stars back at Mecklenburg, but their celebrity uh, would not save their asses. They still had a date with the electric chair, though, so they Only they were going to get theirs. A couple of them got lethal injection because they stopped the electric chair before all That's of them true. got put to death. That's true. But they got that fucking needle. Yeah, now, now, Tex, I think it was pretty obvious that the guards were going to be kind of suspected as being involved in this somehow. I mean, they're only making, it said, 13000 a year at the time. Uh, it's no wonder, you know, that guards would kind of fall prey to that. Yeah, pay has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, training, everything like that. And uh, we're getting some in now. I probably shouldn't say, but they're owned by the gangs when they first uh, come into pre-service. Oh, so wow. So they're already, yeah, they're already um, part of the gang, so they just go in there and do whatever the gangs want them to do. Oh, that's fucking that scary, fucking man. Sucks. I never heard of that before, but that would kind of make sense, you know, that they would have a line on, you know, these guys coming into the, uh, you know, the prison as a guard, and they, like you said, they've got them under their thumb. That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Wow. Um, you know, they had also said that tensions had been high uh, for the past couple of years after a controversial execution where the electric chair malfunctioned. And uh, Frank Coppola, I think that was his name, uh, caught on fire. Fucking definitely. Mile. Yeah, that's yeah. what, that's yeah. what yeah. I was going to I was gonna say that, I bet too. that's where he got that idea from, probably. Yeah, like, that's true. Like, I didn't even think of that, Ty, but that would make sense. The, the I was going to say that. Like, yeah. that dude, like, burned on fire, so all the inmates are like, oh, wait, this could fucking happen to me, bro. Yeah, like, I'm not yeah about it was a that. big deal, man. Um, and, you know, media went crazy with it. Of course, he becomes a martyr with the inmates. Um you know, so Tex, I mean, that's that had to be a pretty, you know, I mean, talk about getting inmates riled up. I mean, that would definitely do it. Yeah, yeah it sure would. Uh, right now in Texas, we're going through, uh, I think they had one execution a few years ago where the guy lived for about 30 minutes after he was supposed to have already died. So oh, wow. they were looking yeah, they were looking into the drugs that we're using, and we had to change. I think it was two of the two of the types of drugs that we're using, or something like that. But, wow. Yeah. Now, have you ever been directly involved in an execution? I don't remember if we've talked about this before. No, I haven't been in a death house when it's uh, when it was going on. The closest I've been is we have a like a command post when we um, for the female inmates there there at uh, Mountain View in Gatesville. Right. And the the death house is in Huntsville. 
Um, they'll have to transport them from Mountain View to Huntsville. I think it's the day before. Um, and I've been set up at the command post, you know, taking uh, waypoints and stuff like that over the phone or over the radio. That's oh, the closest wow. I've Interesting. Is that kind of like they use a certain certain people every time, or is that like kind of like the World Series when they bring in the umps from different places to all, <laughs> or is that a or is that a set crew that always does that kind of stuff? I think that's a set crew. They're all volunteers. Okay. That, uh, going all right. there. Nice. Except for maybe the supervisors, but other than that, it's the same people. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, prior to the escape, uh, an anonymous informant, we said, you know, called the governor and told somebody about a plan of the escape. Um, and, you know, I think that was definitely a very interesting, you know, angle to this because, you know, I didn't, you know, didn't think that that had happened originally and then found that out after watching some of that. I know, I know that we've talked about it. Um, the state of Virginia definitely didn't fuck around. I mean, they started executing these guys one after the other. Uh, they start with Linwood Briley only a few months later in October of 1984, followed by James in the April of 85, Earl Clanton, April of uh, 1988, Derek Peterson, August of 91, Willie Jones, September of 92, and the last of the six, Olem Tuggle, Joey. He's the last of the Mohegans yeah. there. He's executed December of 1996. So definitely, uh, you know, one way to keep them from thinking of escaping again, Joey. Yeah. Put him to death, you know. I mean, you got a combined total of 17 deaths. Jeffrey Dahmer's like, hey, 1978, I'm going to kill my first <laughs> one, and I'm going to do 17 myself and also die about the same time. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. yeah that's weird. Like <laughs> It is, it is. Now, Tex, when something like this happens, you know, we talked about this when we've done these others, um, authorities look over the details to try to learn from their mistakes. And what did you learn um, about what happened after this? I know you said even in Texas, you guys make adjustments when you hear about other escape attempts or escapes in other places, but what did they learn from Mecklenburg? Well, you know, there's always going to be a scapegoat. So they had all their scapegoats. Right. Um, they, uh, changed up. So death row, um, got put on work details, you know, idle hands make devil's playground. Right. Um, thing with education, they put in a lot of educational programs, um, better training for the staff. And they also took that POS prison that they had. Um, <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> and they, they changed it from a maximum to a, like a transfer facility. Right. Where, uh, you know, the inmates were only there for a certain amount of time, and then they went Before out to they their went to their, Right, right. 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 But yeah, that place was not a very good uh, setup as far as the layout of it anyway. Is that what it was about it you didn't like, was the way they had it set up? Uh, I think so. I looked at the, the blueprints, and there was a lot of blind spots, and uh, that uh, the staff uh, restroom that the dude was hiding in, right. yeah. they had done it several times, and nobody ever thought you know, to say anything about it, but that goes to training too. So, you right. Know. Yeah. That's very interesting. I know the department of corrections was forced to resign. The warden of the prison, uh, Gary Bass said that a series of lawsuits against the staff had lowered the morale and, uh, which was part led to the escape. And he's quoted as saying, quote, the staff felt, uh, the prison was being run by the ACLU end quote. So, you know, obviously that stuff's kind of percolating in the in the distance, Tex. I'm sure that didn't help. Yeah, something to be said about that is the staff felt the prison was being run by the ACLU. Yeah, there's a re there's a reason that was. There was a lot of uh, beatings and all kind of stuff that went on that shouldn't have. Right. So they were, you know, they were being overseen. Gotcha. That fucking sucks. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, they tried to close Mecklenburg in 93, but it did remain open. Um, and then, like you said, Tex, it went to a medium security. 
um, you know, short-term type facility. Death Rose moved out in 1997 to Sussex Prison. Uh, it was closed in 90 or 2012, demolished in 2013. And I read the, the last thing I saw is the property is now zoned for industrial use. I don't know if they've built anything I on just, it yet. But I just want to say I, I've said that to some chicks before. You want some sex? <laughs> 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 so I was just going to ask you if you wanted to add anything to the story. So that's, that's apparently what you got. Then. That's it. <laughs> Tex, any final thoughts on this one? I mean, you think they learned anything here? Yeah. Um, just need to train the people better, pay the people, and make sure that they know, you know, everybody, um, that there's no idle hands in the prison. Right. Education, education. And jobs give people something to do. Yeah, and treat people with respect. That's right, it. right. Yeah, I mean that's a good <laughs> that's a good summary of what should be going on. Um, the research I did for this one was done with a few documentaries that I did find on YouTube about the escape. Not a ton of stuff out there. Uh, I was yeah, kind of surprised I didn't see any podcasts about it. Um, so it's kind of cool. Apparently yeah, no we're the first like one documentaries is basically and reading what I could on the internet. Yeah. That's, there were some good newspaper articles. Um, Tex that got were, firsthand that accounts good. of this shit though. Yeah. Holy shit, Tex bro. having that tie, uh, <laughs> of that was very, very interesting. And, uh, we definitely enjoy doing these kind of, uh, episodes now. Um, Chris, next week we're going to be doing a little change. We had a we had our plan of what we were going to do, yeah, and we, we kind of it. talked because you know with all this shit going on with this coronavirus, we're, fuck, we're doing the Black Death, yo. yeah, we're doing the fucking <laughs> Black Plague. We're doing that next week. We thought, why not? Yeah, what do you I think, could, Joey? Yeah, that's a good one. Put good time in the yep. hearts of the minions. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing like talking about a plague in the middle of a, uh, a, a pandemic, plague. yeah. So. <laughs> So, Tex, definitely thanks for shedding some light on this one with us. It's always good to have you on. I definitely think CK is uh, getting ready. Uh, sugar, he's sugar, choo, choo. Getting all fucking jazzed up. So, Tex, why don't you help us close out this segment by letting us know what we need to fucking do right now. Let's get our fucking metal on! Known the world over as the master of metal... The Crusher of Posers, and Murder Metal Mayhem's knower of all things metal, hailing from Wild Man Street in Danbury, Connecticut, standing at six feet of brutal punishing madness, weighing in at 220 pounds of poser pulverization, the one, the only, toughest bastard on the planet, Chris C.K. Coley! Fuck yeah. The great metal motherfucker. <laughs> Thank Got you. CK, what's going on, dude? You know, I'm at the more I think about it, I think Cry Six needs to ask you if they can continue to play that song. <laughs> That's fucking funny. We should trademark that shit. We do need to reach out to those guys and be like, hey, know, we've been bro. using That's this, but we credit them all the right. time. I'm all sure the time. they would be cool about it. It's like all CK Norris. Yeah. CK <laughs> I take your song and it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you hear Joey Gormonger still over here uh, hanging out with us in Horns High. How are we doing, CK? Always good times when he's here. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. We'd always have a good time. Definitely, definitely. So anxious to uh, get into some metal tonight. Got some good stuff we're going to talk about, CK. And in the intro... I mentioned that the the old uh, old school is the way tonight, and the young guys need to take some fucking notes because you're going to get old school on them. So yeah, um, do me. These fuck. guys go way back, man. Going back to um, the band Trouble, f who's is from your area? Yeah, Chicago, you know, Chicago area. Yep. I, actually, I believe it's Aurora. Uh, hold on, hold on. Can I can I stop you for a second? Oh, uh oh, sure. go ahead. Can, you, please? you stepped in it, CK. Please. Go ahead. Ahead, My name Chris. is Wayne Campbell, and I live in Aurora, Illinois, <laughs> which is a suburb of Chicago. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> I had to do it, bro. Yeah. I had to do it. So they're from Aurora then? Yeah. Trouble? yeah. Oh, okay. 
But yeah, they that's always like said a they were south, from Chicago. A southwest suburb of, of Chicago. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's, I had to do it. Sorry, dude. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, they formed in 79. Um, and at that time, they were like one of the few bands who were doing the genre, the doomy type stuff. But at that time, it was only Candlemass and St. Vitus that actually had... Um, Anything as far as record label deals, um, Pentagram was around, but they really didn't get their first deal until mid '80s. So um, it was basically Trouble, Candlemass, and Saint Vitus at the time. Um, obviously, a big influence on them was Black Sabbath. Um, early '80s, like '80, '80, '81, they were signed to um, Metal Blade, and Metal Blade. Gave them this tag, which they hated. And it was kind of, if you think about it, it's kind of stupid. They they termed them white metal. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> white, because everything was so dark and black metal. Okay, they, so they, now they they're... They gave them the term So you're going to make us racist. Uh, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> white metal, because they are trying to give them the tag that they were Christian and... The band fucking hated it. Right. Oh, I, yeah. I I understand. That'd be fucked up, dude. I mean, I mean, they said they were no. They they spoke of positive messages, but they weren't well, a religious band. They didn't want to be tagged a religious band. That's fucking crazy. White metal. Yeah, that just um, sounds awful, man. Like straight. It was one of those things that Brian <laughs> Slagle. Not one of Brian Slagle's better ideas. Let's put it down. Yeah, way. for sure. Um. They were signed like in 82, 83, I believe, to Metal Blade. Um, 84, they put out Psalm 9, which at the time was a departure from anything else released because obviously 84 was the start of thrash metal. So you have a band with a, with a doomy sound, a Black Sabbath type sound, putting out an album. And it was kind of out of their element. They just um, couldn't keep up, bro. But, you know... <laughs> It, it, it was a little cleansing of the palate at the same time because, you know, you're getting a, a flux of all these thrash bands and, and speed metal. It was kind of cool to hear a band that um, kind of went Kept back a little. Kept it kind of slower tempo. Yeah. You know, um, and at that time, the band, f for the most part, this was what the, the members that were pretty much part of the band up until 8045 was Eric Wagner. Bruce Franklin, um, Rick Wartell, Sean McAllister, and Jeff Olson on drums. Um, you know, they got their name out there with, with what was titled Trouble, but it's also known as Psalm 9. Uh, because, because I believe on the bottom of the original album was, was had Psalm 9, but it was actually Trouble self-titled. Self hmm. Um, then, um, the year after they released, um, a, a much better album, The Skull, um, a step above, above Psalm 9, um, still, you know, the same, still the same genre, getting into that doomy shit, still the same, um, members at the time, um, great album. Then it, I mean, they were putting out albums 84, 85, and I believe 87 was um, Into the Light, which a lot of people didn't like for some reason. But um, I thought it was a great album. I, th I thought they were trying to, they were turning a corner as far as better songs. Um, yeah, songs but you know how more... people are when it's something different than what oh, they've yeah. heard. When, when you, when you know, you change something different. I mean, they were getting better as songwriters. They were, the hooks were a little bit better. The songs were a little bit more memorable. Um, and then... It's kind of like how years, people they, were when uh, Whitechapel just did that album a little while ago where he did the clean vocals and shit. Yeah. People did not yeah, like that at all. I didn't like it at first either, but I, the album's great. Right. Is that uh, The Valley? Or? Uh, God, I was in... Yeah, the valley. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe '85 was when 
I saw Trouble the first time. I believe you were at the same show, Pete, when um, they opened for King Diamond. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Which was a, which was a weird combination, but um. Yeah, for sure. It was it was a great show, regardless. And um, I actually met Trouble afterwards. They're really cool guys. Very cool. And um, and I and I, I I asked Eric Wagner at the time. I said, "Are you a Christian man?" Because at the time you didn't. That's what you were told, and and you know they really didn't say anything anything otherwise because they want didn't want to go against Metal Blade or piss off Brian Slagle. He goes, he goes, no, we're not we're not a Christian band. We're just like this thing thing about positive things. That's you know, fucking I, awesome. I, yeah, um, I mean that's their thing. Then um, they were on a little hiatus for three years. Um, rumor was that they were. Getting signed, Rick Rubin loved these guys, and Rubin wanted to sign him to um, Def Jam, which later he had his own label, obviously Def American. Right. Then American Records, they, they left the Def out, and um, I believe they were either like the second or third band that were signed. Um, obviously Slayer was the first band. I think um, the Black Crows were after them. Then I think Trouble was the third band signed to the, to the label. Hmm. So you know, he thought really highly of I, these guys. Were, were the PC Boys on there? No, they were on. Uh, that was Def Jam. Jam. That was Jeff yeah. Jam. Okay, not a Def Jam. Okay, yeah. all, right, all right. Which he had a part in that, of course. Right, of course. Yeah, yeah. I just they were on, I, actually the Beastie Boys were on Def Jam for one album, and the second album they were they were signed to Capitol. Yeah, I right, that makes sense. Um. And in 90, 1990, three years later, they put out this self-titled Trouble album on, on Deaf American. Supposedly, Ruben, Rick Rubin produced it, but I heard um, that was bullshit. He just liked to put his name as a credit, as producer um, uh, on a lot of things. Well, when you get that name right. that like that, you're just like, that fuck legacy it. They want your name shit. on there, you know. Yeah. It sounds and, um, good. Black Crows actually fucking ousted him out on that one because I guess on the first album he, when it originally came out, it had him no, not not even on the credits. And when they got pop- popular, the second um pressing of the CD, had him as executive producer. Oh, nice. So you know, but from what I heard, it, it was it was just Rick Rubin and name and and really the band produced the album. Oh. But it was a fucking amazing album. They took the they took the doominess, kind of sped it up a tad, and added a little bit of psychedelia to it. So, um, you know, it was just a fucking great album. And after three years, I remember when that came out in 1990, I constantly just played that album over and over and over. I liked it so much. Yeah. Um, you know... Then in two years later, I actually saw them on that on that tour as well. I forgot they opened for somebody. I can't remember who it was, but um, they isn't were just it weird that live. you can remember them playing, but you can't remember who they oh, opened God. for? <laughs> How weird is I, that? Like I came to I see was, this band. I don't care who's fucking the headliner. Like I came to see I, this. I, I I went for the headliner too. I just can't remember. It might have been Overkill. Right. I, I couldn't well, fucking tell it's you. just so many shows within your lifetime. After, yeah, like, after, they're after mixed like up. I don't know where the fuck I yeah. was at. After right. six hundred shows, it's it's like right. a few just or yeah. just like it's. It would have been nice to cool. log in, you know, like every show you went to. That'd be so cool oh, to yeah. have that, you know. Of course, you don't think of that shit if we at had the time. The, but... If we had the internet's back then, like we do today, it'd be like yeah. got that shit on the cloud, son. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I mean, you could probably go back and find out who they played with, but yeah. I think it might have been Overkill. I can't fucking remember. Right, right. Um, Ninety-two, they put out their second album for um, Deaf American, Manic Frustration. Um, another great album, supposedly produced by Rick Rubin. Again, heard heard otherwise that it was just name only. But again, another great fucking album. Um. Unfortunately, that album didn't do as well as the um, f- as, as the self title for Deaf American, and um, as the record business has it, they were dropped after that. Um, took a couple years off, signed with Century Media, and put out um, Plastic Greenhead, which is um, 
picks up where, where, where basically where trouble, manic frustration was going. Same vibe. Um, the doomy, psychedelia vibe. Now, and, when you um, say plastic greenhead, I'm sorry to interrupt once again. <laughs> but when you say plastic greenhead, I feel like sick Rick needs to make a mask <laughs> of reanimator with the fucking oh nice dude yeah reanimator I'll, would be badass dude no, but that would be sick in green cool. yeah That'd so rick cool if you're mask. listening check that out yeah, Make, rick. like check that shit out <laughs> <laughs> um, that'd be fucking awesome and at that time the, the those three albums um the original drummer left and he had um I think it was Barry. His name Barry Stern from another band out of Chicago, So Trope. Um, he played with them. Um, and in '95, Eric Wagner left, and 1996-97, Kyle Thomas from Exorder took over lead vocals. Even though at that time there was nothing recorded with him, um, he used the vocals for a couple years. Then. Um, Corey Clark from the band um, Warrior Soul, another band from from your area, which at that time was was a, a band with a little, was, which was kind of, I guess, marched to be their own drummer. Um, band I'll probably end up doing at some point for for a segment, but um, Corey Clark was the um, Vocals, I believe, from like 2008 to 2012. Or, um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In 2007, let me go back. Eric Wagner came back and they released Simple Minded Condition um, on a label called Escaping Music. Um, and they went back to, to more of the doomy sound, um, less of the psychedelic sound. Um, and this album is as hell But I like fuck. mushrooms, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, after being away for 12 years um, they put out an album that was just really killer and then Eric Wagner left again and that's when Cor Corey Clark came in um, from 2008-2012 um, as a singer um, didn't release anything on vinyl or, or, or on tape uh, but basically, he he played live with them. Then in 2012, he left, and Kyle Thomas came back from um, from Exorder, the lead singer from Exorder, and um, they released a distortion field in 2013 um, with with Kyle Thomas. Awesome album. Um, and as of right now, that's the last thing they released. Hmm. Um, they haven't had anything else after that. Supposedly, they're still together. Kyle Thomas is still listed as the lead singer. Uh, supposedly, they're, re they're going to record something again soon. Uh, meanwhile, Eric Wagner has had um, a couple bands. He's been in um, a band called Blackfinger that yeah, released two albums. Blackfinger was on the same label as uh, Low 12. We were on Dark Star Records together. Uh, yeah, which is a yeah. Chicago label. But yeah, Eric's band was on there. I remember uh, playing, I think, the single off of that when I had my heavy core radio show. So that's that's a funny coincidence. Yeah, then um, he went on to perform a, uh, perform a band called The Skull. Yeah. And um, that's the band he's in as, as of this moment right now. Um, like I said, as far as I know, Kyle Thomas is still... Listed as the vocalist, even though he's out touring with um with Exhorter. Um, I mean, because Exhorter is fucking awesome. Yeah, they got their they're, new I album. Mean, they're both awesome bands. Little, little I haven't little, heard um, the Skull at all, so I've definitely checked that out. I have, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it's the same vibe as Trouble, you know, Doomy. Um, really good shit. It's really good stuff. A little um, sludgier. Both a little sludgier. Black Finger and the Skull, you know, the, both those bands are in the same vibe as as, as Trouble. Right. Um, you know, hopefully they're going to come out with another album soon because the Distortion Field is really a good album. I really enjoyed that album a lot. Um, we'll see what happens. Awesome. Fuck yeah, dude. Awesome. Now, CK, you got a uh, lost classic for us tonight, uh, don't you? 
Yes. One um, of those ones you just cool. dig up out of that uh, that room of yours, that uh, never-ending <laughs> yeah, fucking much, pit um, of fucking CDs and DVDs. Dude, you got... The one gotta, that almost swallowed me up whole that time <laughs> I stayed there. Pete about fell on his head. <laughs> I, I, I gotta take a pitch. I gotta take a picture and show you because ever oh, since no. Um, no, I bet you, you you're ridiculous. Has you're, it gotten worse? You're a fucking music I, well, I was in the process of, of in this coronavirus. In process, yeah, in this coronavirus, <laughs> everybody needs music. Why are you taking it all? <laughs> <laughs> I'm such a dick. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the process before I went in the hospital in August of um, reorganizing everything, and and that's when I got sick, and it's just oh, been oh yeah, like such an it's I just been adding shit and <laughs> having had the damn, fucking man. I haven't had the um oh my god <laughs> the, the um the strength well. <laughs> no, I, well, that's you understandable. But you You're have the good. strength to open those fucking boxes, though, from Amazon. Oh, you bet your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but your ass, I did. I got that shit in the mail today. <laughs> that's funny. So, the, so who's your classic, the dude? The Lost Classic is a band called Morgoth out of Germany. Um, and they were they were um, early '90s, and they kind of had they were a German death metal band, but. It kind of kind of sound like a German version of Fear Factory. Oh shit! I've never. Yeah, and, and they had. Why do I feel like they played at the Canopy Club, or not the Canopy, but uh, Lafayette Club? Oh no, they definitely didn't play there. But okay, uh, Morgoth was. Like, I mean, they're still around. They yeah. just put out an album, um, 2015. They're still around. But the the album that I really dig by them is an album that was released by Century Media called "Feel Sorry for the Fanatic." Hell yeah. Which I believe is still available. I believe it's been re-released, but um, I don't think too many people have heard of this band. And um, if you get a chance, I believe it's it's you could stream it too. Dude, um, I remember listening to these guys when I was in high school because of Cashman. Oh like, yeah, I had a, like because of they Cashman. They put out like their first two demos together: Resurrection Absurd and um, Female and Fantasy, I believe. But uh, or re- yeah, I, I think they re- I think those are re-released on a CD. Right, but like when um, I when I was growing up back in I mean this is probably ninety one like right after it came out that was I had that tape and it was probably the first tape I ever owned with growling vocals. With yeah, and, some and kind the of artwork on and it shit. was very influential to me right. too. They did some really badass shit, but to me it's like a masterpiece of death metal. Like they got songs like Pits of Etumino. Yeah, they were. They were a great band. Yeah, they, very, they are uh, a great band. Too. Like, hmm. if you like uh, like Gorgut style stuff, I think I would equate them kind of like to that. Okay. Yeah, Fuck that's yeah. Fun. Like that's I a said, good I, one, CK. I, I know they're fucking badass, dude. But um, yeah, that that that's my lost classic, and um, I'll have another one for you guys next week, of course. I that's can't awesome, remember. It, I might be wrong about this, but uh, Morgoth might even have been like Century Media's first release, like. Actual it it it, hmm. it might have been one of the first, definitely one of the first yeah, yeah. first bands. Interesting. Um, the funny thing is that the first time I ever heard of Century Media was when um they put out the um Third Crow Mag CD. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's and that was funny. like 1990, 91. That's like crazy. So more so Morgoth may have been one of the first, definitely. Within within like the top two or three um, signings that they probably had for America, Crow Mags would be a pretty decent one for you to do. Oh yeah, hell yeah, <laughs> yeah! I love the Crow, crow Mags. Mags. <laughs> I love the Crow Mags. Fuck yeah, dude! Now I'll tell you, you know, we've been talking about the Six 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 Club and and that these people need to join this shit, Joey, and and you know they get the exclusive content VIP. Right. Uh, patreon.com slash murder metal mayhem three bucks a month man that's nothing uh ck for some vip access man they get the no, show like i say just go to your change drawer right you know if you have to go to a fucking coin star <laughs> get the three dollar bills that shit in. we white trash put it, it around in your this bank bitch. account put it in your bank account use your debit card or paypal or whatever you use and right. get it that's right three bucks a month get VIP access, and we're going to be doing some exclusive content that you'll only be able to hear on Patreon. So you definitely want to get it. It's not going to be something that we just like randomly put out later in the years. No. Like, 
It's the only way you get it. Hail Satan. Yeah, that's the only way is is to get on Patreon Hail and the join that door. 666 club. Uh, National Metal News, CK, you got any releases you wanted to yeah. mention? Um, there's really nothing coming out. Um, next, next, I think this Friday is the re-releases of the last four Dio CDs and albums, um, in deluxe editions. Okay. Um, new, I know New Havoc is coming out, I believe. In yeah, the new, playing a song new tonight, out, yeah. Phantom Force, it's fucking um, badass. New Warbringer is also coming out in April. Oh, those are the guys that didn't send me my shirt, man. I'm not going to bring that <laughs> Son up. Son of a bitch. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Fuck. <laughs> and, um, Got PTSD over that shit. <laughs> you know how I am with shirts, man. That's what started on. the coronavirus. Pete not getting <laughs> his sure, damn you shirt. Sure you don't have it? No, you sure you don't have it? Do. It's just misplaced? No. no. They're, they're obviously not war sender. No, no. <laughs> not war sender. God damn, dude! I've done that shit with CDs, you know. Yeah, thought you didn't get it. No, I was looking for it, and yeah, they were. It was just bad, so I don't. Want, I don't want to bring it up, but you know, I heard you say it. It brought back my PTSD them. over the whole issue. So. <laughs> um, unfortunately, we have some sad news. Um, Sacred right. Jason Rainey from Sacred Oath, original founding member. Sacred um, Reich. I'm Sacred Reich. Sorry, shit. Yeah, I said Fuck. Sacred Reich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That's all right. Disregard that. <laughs> Disregard that. <laughs> Sacred Reich um, passed away from a heart attack. Yeah, um, I guess he had some health issues. Yeah, that's sad, hear, man. But, um, young, very young to have that happen. Fifty-three, I think 53. it was. Fifty-three. Yeah. That's how old I am, so it's kind of scary. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not too far oh, behind you. Don't die, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. You're right behind me, CK. Well, uh, definitely. That fucking really weird. <laughs> CK. Hey, 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 CK, I want to tell you a joke that I got from my daughter. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, this is kind of special. <laughs> yeah, this is special. So, you know why the aborted fetus is so smart? Why? Because she wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Got that from my daughter. Just, <laughs> oh, shit. It's a nice that's father-daughter so moment there. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> You're in trouble. I know, right? Now, her Joey, you got, a, my ass. you got a big show coming up, The Heart of Illinois. Yeah. Uh, you want to talk about what's going on with that, dude? I, I will, but real fast, I wanted to ask CK real quick. Uh, CK, you listen to uh, Beneath the Massacre? The what? Uh, Beneath the Massacre. I, I, to tell you the truth, I, I think I have a couple CDs from them, but I, I'm not. They're, they're fucking I, I, brutal, bro. They, uh, yeah. they, uh, they were a band that was hit or miss with me for a long time. Like, I like some of their stuff, but not so much of the other, you know? I, I, but uh, they just released an album like in the last yeah, couple weeks. Yeah, I just weeks, saw they was... just released an album after a couple of years. Dude, and that shit is fucking heavy. No, That's it's heavy I was as fuck. If you had heard that, you might dig. Hmm. I'll, have to, I'll have to go on. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. Uh, I'll have to go stream it before I before I. Yeah, I'll probably end before you commit. It. No, yeah. but dude, no, <laughs> it's like different. Not in a bad way from what they've done before, yeah, dude. No, it's definitely. It's more just like brutal. it just slams so hard, yeah. dude. It's heavy as fuck. Nice, but uh. Yeah, so yeah, so I was curious. We were listening to it. I was like, I wonder if CK heard this. Yeah, I remember Meister <laughs> turned me on to those guys. They're really heavy. Right. Oh, but no, I said, that, that, I remember sending Meister fucking, uh, or giving him a fucking burnt CD back in the day or some shit. He's like, I need more of that, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, Beneath the Mask is fucking just Yeah, that's violent. the thing with all the fucking sh- all the shit I have. I can't remember sometimes when I do <laughs> right. Oh, right. Dude. Oh, I could see that. I've seen pictures, bro. I've done it with books before, so. so oh, sure. you literate. You know, I'll be like, this literate motherfucker over here <laughs> fucking picking his teeth all nonchalant like, hey, <laughs> suck. I read. <laughs> <laughs> now, Joey, did you want to talk about your Heart of Illinois yeah, show? Uh, yeah. So, of course, like. You know, with everything that's going on right now in the fucking world, losing its goddamn mind. That, fucking uh, right. Everything's somewhat up in the air. Right. But at- hey, hey, do you guys do you guys have limits on um, 
gatherings and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All the bars and restaurants yeah. are locked down. Illinois is pretty bad. Yeah, they, they closed them here, too. Yeah. It's only takeout only. Wow. Yep. I actually just got back. I went to Daytonian Death Fest in Ohio this weekend and got to enjoy myself that Saturday. And then Ohio shut down the very next day, basically, all their stuff. So that that could have been the last thing I got to do for a while, unfortunately. Yeah, it's wow. just but I am glad I got to do that. But anyway, with, uh, with Heart of Illinois Fest coming up, though, that's still May 9th. I mean, we're all hoping, you know, that all this stuff might be behind us by then. And, May 9th, um, baby. If not, you know, I'll try to reschedule. It's mostly a bunch of friends, so we can probably figure it out. But anyway, as of right now, May 9th, Forest, Illinois, 13 bands, $5. Uh, some good bands, uh, Virulent Excision, Bill Nye, um, Crotch Ripper, of course, a boy. Inebriated. Inebriated, yeah. I mean, it's it's going to be a really good time. I'm going to have uh, the Murder Metal Mayhem guys out. Fuck yeah. Got you guys yeah. slated oh. for two segments, not so late, because we know – how Chris gets, but <laughs> that'll be good. <laughs> but, uh, are, you, are you still doing your uh, Britney Fox tribute band? Oh, man, and... I should. I definitely should. <laughs> I'll tell awesome. you what. I'll bring something up uh, at Daytonian Death Fest, and a big reason that, you know, I went out there with Bring them on. Whatever. But uh, one of the biggest, you know, draws was Cunt Torch was supposed to play that yeah. show. Oh, That okay. was his last one that he that had Ryan's booked. So show. Uh, during that time period while he played, we put up a banner for him, and we just played Cunt Torch songs. Oh, cool. And everybody moshed around, and just some guys got up. Cunt Torch, dude. Yeah, I've so I thought that was really it, cool. So nice. I wasn't there, but yeah. Yeah, it was, it was super but awesome. I, I think for Heart of Illinois, since that was the last time some of the other people got to see him, too, we'll do something for him out there. Sure. Tribute. That's very cool. So, yeah. Anyhow, so Heart of Illinois still May 9th. I mean, it's going on May until further awesome. notice. Uh, it's so. awesome. <laughs> now, Chris, you were at the uh, show Sunday night at Daddio's uh, yeah, in Bloomington, was, Illinois. Was fun. Said it was fun. badass. Like some in the Lich, they was playing, dude. Fuck they were heavy, fun. weren't they? So, some in the dick? Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Why are you always making me sucking dicks, bro? <laughs> 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 Fuck. This is bullshit, dude. <laughs> Just because we got the same name, you suck dick too. <laughs> but yeah, no. not lately. <laughs> Maybe yesterday. <laughs> I don't know. But it was a good show, though. But yeah, no, the show was fucking awesome, man. Uh, like I said, summoning the lich, uh, they fucking tore it up. Dude. Where were they from? St. Uh, Louis, right? Oh, yeah, St. I believe Louis. St. Louis. Oh, cool, yeah. cool. Uh, How was Chalk with the new guys? Chalk with the new guys is pretty fucking awesome, dude. Like nice. the new drummer's fucking awesome. Uh, he he, like, he's got foot, like on the double kicks, like a monster, dude. Nice. Uh, Singer does the a new growling. vocalist like his gutturals are intense, oh, and he's wow. actually like put videos on like saying, "Here's what I like." Instructional video. I don't want to say okay. instructional videos. But like oh, wow. he's got videos on YouTube, like doing vocal covers. Yeah, do not, no, not necessarily vocal. I guess it would be instructional because he explains like this is what I do. I breathe in this way, and then I do wow. this certain thing with my tongue, and my diaphragm pushes. And like, like no, he straight puts instruction. I guess it is instructional. Fuck, but. <laughs> Make up your fucking mind. Man, fuck off, dude. <laughs> but no, the, the show was great. Uh, Blood Feud fucking tore shit up. Awesome. Uh, Eyes from Above was the uh, first time I ever heard them in general, let alone see them. Yeah. They were fucking awesome, dude. They, uh, uh, Which also, Eyes from Above, their drummer is Chalk's new vocalist. Okay. So, like, he was double team tonight. Plus, while he's playing drums in Eyes from Above, he's doing vocals as well. Oh wow! So it, busy, it, motherfuckers. Yeah, it, it is pretty intense. It was, it was a good night. Plenty That's cool. You said there. the crowd was there. Yeah, the crowd was there. It was a good time. And they Fucking, got another one coming up too, uh, as but long maybe as they, not though with the bars. A, April twenty yeah. sixth, I, I believe it's April twenty sixth. I think you're right. Yeah, and it's uh, uh, event of collapse. It's headlining, treachery untold's playing, and I apologize to anyone, but I can't remember offhand. I don't have it in front of me. Yeah. That's technically my next show is April 4th, your wedding day. Your wedding that day. That night. But no, no, I no, no, highly no. doubt. 
I was talking about the next one at Daddy's. No, I know, and I'm saying my next oh. show is technically the April 4th show. Oh. In an argument. That's, I, I highly see that's that being up in the air yeah. right now. But, yeah. uh, you know, until they tell us, you no, never know. Still on, so. You never know. So, very cool. Well, I think, guys, we've done plenty of uh, metal tonight. Uh, CK, you're going to stick around with us into Mayhem, you said, Fuck right? Yeah. So, uh, why I don't got, you? I got a couple quick stories. Nice. Awesome. Awesome. Nice. So, do they got to do a poop? No, Fuck. It, has to, uh, <laughs> has, has to do with my medical issues. Oh, oh boy. Uh, well, CK, why don't you tell the listeners what we're going to be fucking doing next, man? Going to be doing some fucking man, motherfuckers. Do you find yourself getting pissed at shit for no goddamn motherfucking reason? Do you ever want to just kill a bitch? God damn it, you fucking bitch. Here at Benoit Anger Management, we can help you out when you're about ready to fucking snap. Let one of our life coaches help you through that shit, motherfucker. I told you to shut the fuck up. Call us at 800 Got Rage, and we'll tuck you down off that ledge and teach you how to get that God shit in control it. before you kill everybody in your fuck fucking heart. family. Then my anger management can fucking help. Shut the fuck up! Jesus Christ, man. I just want to punch myself in the dick when I hear that. (laughs) (laughs) That is so fucking awful, man. Benoit management can fucking help, dude. Yeah, that was that was uh, a narrator by uh, narrated by you, Chris, and uh, my son Joe Joe doing the screaming and shit in the background. Real (laughs) proud fucking father moment there. (laughs) (laughs) That's not right, bro. Well, we are in mayhem, guys. It's a good place to be. Hell yeah. <laughs> we played some trouble before that. Um, the song Assassin, that was cool. Uh, good to talk to you, CK, about uh, the band Trouble and having you back for some, some stories, fucking right? some stories to tell in mayhem, yeah, I man. I got some two quick ones. All, All right. right, cool. Let's so, why don't you go, man? The first. The first one goes back to when I first got cancer and I had my original operation to remove the tumor tumor when I was given like the one percent chance to fucking live. Yeah. One percent. That's fucked. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I guess when I when I had the operation, they told my wife I was gonna be like out of it for a while. Um, going in and out of consciousness and all this shit. Well, I guess after when I was in the in the um in the room where you, where you recuperate before you go up to your room. Right. I woke right up. And, and you don't um, remember it? I remember some things. Like, I remember, <laughs> like, the story I'm telling you, I remember it. I drink a lot I of booze. Go- I know that feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I remember going up to my room, and it was either the day after or a couple days after. I kept on ringing the fucking bell for the nurse because I wanted something to drink, and I couldn't drink anything because I had a tube going down my throat through my nose. Been and there. And they kept on telling me, you, you, can't, you can't drink anything yet. You can't eat anything yet. Hmm. And I was constantly pushing it, and the nurse would come, and I'd say, I need something to drink. They're like, no, you can't have it. So you'll be able to have it soon. So I guess they took my wife aside. They said, He's a nice guy, but you need him to tell him to stop pay- having us paid for, for getting something to drink. You can't have it. So my wife comes and she goes, stop ringing the fucking bell. I think they're gonna f-. She's like, I think they're going to fucking kill you. Damn. If you ask one more Just time stop, for, something, for, for water or something to drink. I remember going, okay. And I fucking ring the bell. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> ding, ding, bitches. <laughs> like, yes. I'm like, 
can I have something to drink? <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I just kept it. I mean, eventually I was able to get some drink, but I, I was, I guess I was being a pain in the ass. I don't know. <laughs> wow. Whatever happens to the best of us. Like, Dude, at least but, give me some ice chips or some shit, bro. No, right. he gave me that. That, that. that was the only thing I could have. Yeah. It was ice chips? Hell yeah. Fuck that. That sucks. I just yeah. want a fucking and goddamn it, Mountain Dew or something, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and and the second story was after one of my other operations. I think it was the last one I had in um, 2016, it might have been. I, I guess they did an epidural when I had the operation on my, on my last tumor when they took it out of my stomach. I remember w- waking up in the recovery room. And I go, I'm fucking paralyzed. <laughs> I can't fucking oh, move, damn. man. <laughs> I can't move my legs. It's like, Mr. Kovacs, you okay? I go, I'm paralyzed. I can't. It's like, no, it's the epidural. I go, no, I'm paralyzed. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I can't and, and fucking I, move And I'm shit. still fucked up on I'm still fucked up on the drugs. I go, no, I'm paralyzed. They're like, no, you're not. I go, where's my wife? They're like, she's in the waiting room. I go, I need her to tell me I'm not paralyzed. I need her to let me know. Oh, damn. <laughs> Chris, so, you're not paralyzed. Thanks, so, so they, So they, could, they have to go and get my wife because I'm freaking out. I'm like, I'm paralyzed. I can't move my legs. And they go and get her, and she's freaking out. I'm like, you know, wh- why, why are you getting me? What happened? They're like, he's freaking out because he, he can't move his legs yet. And he won't, he won't believe us unless you say it. So she comes, she goes, what's up? I go, I'm paralyzed. She goes, no, you're not. I go, yeah, you know, I can't move away. She goes, no, you're not. It's the epidural. I go, you sure? <laughs> she goes, yeah, I'm fucking sure. You're not paralyzed. Could be it's no, I don't think you're right. I, th- I, I, I said, I think I'm paralyzed. I go, we got problems. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Wow. Next thing I know is, is they're giving me like, they must have gave me like morphine or something. Put me <laughs> See, out. Those are the things I wish that uh, she had, like, recorded. Like, you know, you see those kids oh, coming God. out getting their fucking wisdom teeth pulled. Right. Coming out of the anesthesia like, ah, oh, fucking no. Dude, I wish she had got video of that because that would be great. <laughs> oh, God, I wish. <laughs> that shit would have been funny. Yeah, that would have been funny. Well, very yeah. good, CK. Always good to have some uh, mayhem from you. Joey, uh, did you have any? Uh... I got a quick one if you want yeah, one. Yeah, go ahead. It's kind of, uh, I've told this one to Chris. I, he likes this story. Yeah. So, uh, All right. You know, I, I don't get sick very often. I'll go to the doctors very often. But um, back in like 2003 or 2004, I'm at work, and all of a sudden I just fucking dropped to the ground. My fucking stomach hurt, and, and <coughs> it was a kidney stone. <laughs> but I had no idea at the time. And so I'm fucking freaking out. And that shit hurt. So, but that's to me the worst pain I've ever felt, you know. Right. I thought my fucking appendix was going to burst or something, you know. So, anyway, so I mean, literally, I'm at a cash register working at Tom and Jerry's in the cow. Fucking boom, to the <laughs> ground. I, I just stand up. I look at the customer. I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't know what that <laughs> was, just... you know. <laughs> and then it happens again. So, uh, I crawl over and I got my phone sitting there. It's old Nextel, you know. Yeah. Right, right. It's chirp to talk. It, right. <laughs> and this is whenever I first met and this was hanging out with Texas Dave, who was right? fucking Texas Dave of shit. Sinworm, o- oily on discharge. Tell some of these damn stories. Yeah, dude, Texas dude. Dave, he's just a ton of stories. Oh. So this motherfucker's crazy. But anyway, I call him because he's the only person I can get a hold of uh, to come get me because I'm just in pain. So he does. He picks me up, go back to my apartment because I. I'm still not wanting to go to the doctors and stuff because, you know, that costs money, no insurance, and I don't know what's wrong with me. So I'm like, let me go home, go to the bathrooms, you know, see if something's (laughs) wrong there. Sure. So I'm in the fucking... Did you have to fart? I didn't know. I mean, it was just so much pressure and pain, you know? So I'm in the bathroom. I'm living up on the top story of a duplex, and... uh, Finally, I'm at the point where I'm like, no, this isn't what's going on. I'm in fucking pain. So I fucking come out of the bathroom. Texas Dave, nowhere to be found. I'm fucking looking for this guy. I'm like, I want to go to the hospital. So I fucking, I'm crawling down my steps to the first fucking, oh, you know, to the ground level because it's so much pain. Dude, having kidney stones, I could totally yeah. relate to the pain is fucking awful. Dude, man. it was fucking just I, treacherous. I stones. Those are probably like the same as kidney right? stones. Right. But anyway, so I fucking come crawling out this motherfucker, and sure enough, there he comes. He fucking comes pulling up in his goddamn pickup truck. 
That motherfucker went to the liquor store to go get some beer because I'm he in pain <laughs> over here. I might need to go. To the I gotta go get booze, dude. Of course he did. That motherfucker went to go that's, get some that's booze. Texas yeah, he uh, just pulls uh, up while I'm crawling on the ground and just opens the door, smiling with a fucking you know case of beer in between. I was like, okay, but yeah. So you know, for St. Patrick's Day, good drinking tale. There you go. No, that's awesome, dude. That's did he hilarious. Did he at least take you to the doctor. He did. He took me to the doctor. And, you know, I I got the man that. I was in there just fucking crying. Like, why would you people fucking do something yeah. to help me? And, you know, That's it takes awful. a while for they can oh, figure yeah. out what they can Process do. Process everything right. and all Dude, that shit. And, yeah. You know, I got through that. But I, after that, I definitely watched, like, soda intake. And I, I think drinking beer a lot back then, too. was Right. Like, I ain't Thank never you. had no damn kidney stone. I, dude, you drink so much whiskey, Ooh. you destroy all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we've got week two of the March Mayhem contest. I'm definitely That's psyched the only for this. Going right? on the right only now. event, still only <laughs> event not canceled, is the March Mayhem contest. Somebody, I'm in good shape with this. I right, had a right. couple of people yeah, comment fuck. and said, "Thank God that this is still going on. <laughs> right. like, I've got like, something to look forward to." That's awesome. Goddamn fucking. Uh, DraftKings and shit should get yeah. up on on this. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. So uh, we're going to mention the listeners again that uh, we're playing for. Chris, uh, you're going to be playing for Stephanie from Toledo, Ohio, right? Yes, sir. And CK, you have been playing for Justin from Lexington, Illinois. And both of you guys, your your listeners have been cheering you on on Facebook, like so that, that's dude. awesome. Got, yeah, I saw that. And Steven from Chicago is who I play for. So this is uh, still those three and will be those three all the way to the end of the month until we finish the scoring. But right now, um, you know, it's hard to tell because it's the matches happens. are still going on. The first prize is, of course, a co-hosting spot on Murder Metal Mayhem with a murder segment with us. So with it's going to be cool. We'll let you choose. Yeah. And uh, we've got prizes for second and third place, too. So everybody gets good prizes. Yeah, gets shirts and no matter what. The new so book and good. stickers and all kinds of cool stuff. So, uh, all right. Now, Chris, the temperature right now. Yeah, not, not, is, not my battery power. That's because, right. <laughs> because if I, if I looked at my battery power right now, yeah. it'd be hot because my battery's at 100%. So we'd oh, be damn. Hot. Be fucking hot. 100, 100 degrees <laughs> in the coronavirus <laughs> epidemic. Man, fucking ridiculous. But yeah, we are at, oh shit, 37 degrees. All right. So 37 is an odd number. So odd number is the first number. So, or the first name in the match. So. Oh, Last shit. week it was the second. <laughs> this week it's the first. So my, my number one is still in. Okay. Uh, oh All shit. Right. But, my, but my two and three got knocked out. Ah. Uh, so we've got the first match was uh, Richard Speck and Henry Lucas and Henry Lee Lucas. So Richard so Speck Richard wins Speck. that one. So Called Pandram H H Holmes. That makes a whole lot of sense. That right does. Now. A Pandram, Pandram still in like, it. You ain't fucking me. I'm fucking you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think H.H. H. Holmes yeah, stood a chance up against a, Carl Panzeram. Yeah. Hold on. And then uh, Eileen, Eileen Warnos, Warnos and Arthur Shawcross. I mean, Eileen fucking tough, I mean, man. She's a fucking road bitch, dude. She'll fucking kill your ass. So, I mean, I can see that. Right. Yeah. And then what do you think, Joey, with uh, Albert Fish and Bell Gunnis? Albert Fish, how does he win? I mean, the dude is so fucking old and decrepit, you can't really imagine. Uh, Bell Gunnis, she was I she know, was she was burly, a hefty you know? fucking yeah, woman. She's a big old horse of a girl. So, so I would have to say that I would go with Bell, but uh, yeah, but that's but the Fish winner wins. right there. Fish yeah, wins. Fish so, I mean, must have he must have you know hypnotized crafty. her with his fucking magical eyes. Remember they were saying <laughs> yeah, magical eyes. Yeah, something about him would mesmerize. Yeah, I right, mean maybe right. he just fucking threw down on the floor oh, and stuck shit. cotton balls yeah. up his ass. <laughs> Which also, fire, they yeah. said the exact same thing with Chikatilo, that yeah. he could just, like, mesmerize his victim somehow. Huh. Almost hypnotize him with... Interesting. Just the way he looked at yeah. him, that's fucking goddamn... That's I mean, up. I guess if you're that old and decrepit, you have to have a good fucking, yeah. you know, weapon on your side. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Right. So the Hateful Eight is now yeah, the uh, spec four. We've right. got... Spec Panzram, Warnos, and Fish. Yeah, they're going at it Shit. in the final two matches. <laughs> or fucked the, up the four. Next two What's matches. That is a fucked up four. <laughs> next, <laughs> uh, I, I've got a name for it. Yeah. I can't remember. Oh, uh, it's the fucked up four. <laughs> yeah, fucked up four. That's cool. 
<laughs> the fucked up four. Jesus the Christ. fucked up four. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, those four will be going at it next week, and then the final week of the of the month. We'll have Brian in here from Dark History Convention, Chris. We're going to be doing the yes, last match, the final match, where we will determine the winner of the contest. So good luck go Justin, to Justin, go Stephanie. Stephanie, Stephanie, we got this, and girl. Steven, we got this uh, for being uh, being involved in it with us. It's a lot of fun, and so that'll be next week. We'll continue this shit going. So oh, yeah. with everything getting canceled, at least March mayhem. Is still fucking going on. So Fuck yeah, awesome. Well, I think we've done plenty of mayhem tonight, guys. Fuck so yeah, we have, let's hit that fucking good. outro, man. Fuck okay. yeah, some new Dude, Havoc, man. Havoc's like a badass. New now, school badass. New full Phantom trash. Force, man. And Cashman, you've been to every FTA. Have yeah. they been yeah, there? Yeah, they played. Uh, what year? I can't remember. I He's like, I can't remember. They all mix together now. Yeah. Yeah, those guys are really, really good. <laughs> yeah. uh, definitely like that. And they got that new Kids album are, um, coming out. Their, their fifth album's coming out, yeah. That's awesome, man. Which, which I have pre-ordered. Can't oh, imagine. I can't imagine it, yeah. <laughs> I noticed you waited till the outro to talk about it as opposed to the metal segment. <laughs> Not so great bring, metal uh, motherfucker right there. No, oh. I, I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> I bring, kidding. I bring, yeah. metal, I bring metal to everyone in every fucking segment. That's fucking right. right. That's brother. right. Fucking right. They definitely, were, they were at three. definitely a good show tonight, guys. Three. CK, always killer to have you on throughout the metal mayhem and outro sections of the podcast. Uh, Joey, great to have you on, uh, even at the last moment. Still, we're able yep. to pull it off. As Always it love out. coming in. Awesome, yeah, man. awesome. Uh, I'm bumper glad you music. were my ride. <laughs> right? <laughs> we could have took Dad, t- took pictures of Dad holding uh, poop like a champion. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Well, yeah, they put Jenny on half days from like now on. Right, right. For no, the I, time yeah, being, I, yeah. so. I just thought no, it was No, it was cool, just but... like a last minute, like we didn't know till yesterday about it, so... Yeah, I, I'm cool with that. Bumper music by Trouble, uh, Dying Fetus, and Havoc. Of course, CK's intro music is by who, CK? None other than Chrysix. That's right. And the Gri- Chrysix guys, I should get a hold of them and, t- and tell them about like, it. Hey, bro. I bet they'd be cool with the whole thing. They might so. do it. I'm sure they would. Yeah, yeah like, they seem like, like good we dudes. Use your music yeah, we talk bit. about them constantly just as a thank you for doing it. Because they're so. fucking badass. Yeah, because it is and, badass. And then we got the Murder Metal Mayhem music by none other than the mighty, mighty low motherfucking 12. And That's Michael right. reminded me the other day of what I said. What's that? Oh, what was it? Uh, it was uh, higher than 11. Is that what it was? <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh, <laughs> Something that? like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> higher than 11. <laughs> <laughs> right. That might not even be right either. Michael's probably going to listen to this. It was Thursday. something like that. Like, You're a fucking idiot. You got it dude. wrong twice, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> dude, my favorite shit is the fucking Gacy Low 12 episode. When Chris <laughs> comes back in and his like outro thing, you know, he's like, and keep one fist hanging out low mm-hmm. over and twelve. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like I want to say it. I'm probably going to at some point say it, but it's just so funny. When I <laughs> when I was looking at him yeah. in the eyes, when I was turning it over to him yeah. to close up the and show, fell out. it was like I couldn't believe <laughs> that he was able to muster even that because I was expecting him to just literally fall over yeah. i mean i was expecting like be you know it yeah. was there was nothing there it was like and when, he pulled you, you that off the, you can hear his, you can hear the transgression from the beginning oh, of the show yeah. to the yeah. end and the beginning oh. is bad yeah. no, the, the beginning, beginning is bad, bad dude that was super michael funny. said it took him like yeah, four tries even to get through it because it was just he was <laughs> said like chris was pissed chris him shut off. the fuck up <laughs> 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 Dude, wow <for> <laughs> it's funny because like 
you know, <laughs> before I listened to the episode, I already knew what had gone on. Right. So I already knew what to listen for. And it, right. it was funny because then all of a sudden you don't hear Chris for a while. So you're like, there it is. <laughs> there there it is. is. <laughs> He's out. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't even looked at the video yet You're right. it's gotta be really funny i forgot you guys had video of it I mean, the, whole thing, yeah. the whole thing i bet like this the full fucking <laughs> screen the whole thing i never shut it off yeah nice. the whole thing is on there all oh, right fuck. so check out spellbound effects and art.com for their incredible <laughs> online catalog yeah. we're talking about it tony campagna just Dude, amazing man killing it yeah, Ed Gein inspired art, human skin lamps, aprons, cowboy hats, fucking all kinds of cool fucking shit. Fucking dicks. Dicks, if you want that <laughs> sort of thing. Feet, hands, heads, I mean, Dude. ears, whatever, man. He makes them thumb and they look drives. so fucking realistic. Thumb, thumb drive. drives. The thumb drives are badass. I have a thumb drive <laughs> yeah. from Tony, so go to check him out at spellboundeffectsandart.com. All go right. to fucking goddamn Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And you need to go up tour there. For the Jeffrey Dahmer Cream City Cannibal Tour at Shakers, man. In Shakers Milwaukee. is amazing, man. Dude, that place is like one of my favorite places to go. Like, yeah. every, every time. I thought the liquor my... store was. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, my yes. God. CK. Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, you're not wrong around. though you're, you're not, not wrong, wrong at all <laughs> holy fuck dude wow <laughs> that was good damn I love you. But no, a that real was like talk. a nuclear fucking blast <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like I, I feel threatened right now man <laughs> shit it's like the Manhattan Project in here man <laughs> holy yeah, shit call HR on me <laughs> yeah, right go to, go to yeah. Milwaukee fucking go to Shaker Sabar uh, lounge and Get your Cream City Cannibal Tour. Yep. Check out the, uh, what's the uh, ghost Hangman tour? Tours. The Hangman com. Tours, yeah. Yeah, Hangman go to hangmantours.com. You'll have a fucking great time, I promise you. Yeah, there, it's an amazing place. Uh, don't miss next week when we're going to uh, continue on that March Mayhem contest. So, again, best of luck to mm. Justin, Stephanie, Two and fights. Steven. So Two fights. That's right. We're getting down Hell to yeah. it. Uh, thanks to everybody listening out there. We really appreciate it, especially our new listeners in London and in uh, Winnipeg, Manitoba, in Canada, uh, crushing it in the top 10 uh, cities listening. So we appreciate everybody listening. But it's always cool to see a new city pop up like Definitely that. Definitely always so a good time to see it's really, city. really cool. Thank you guys for listening. Danbury's still oh, number shit. two, man, uh, CK. Bet sweet ass. <laughs> yeah, Bloomington, Illinois, Got right behind him. Yeah. yeah. Got uh, Bloomington, Illinois, number three. And Dallas, Texas is number four, nice. man. They're moving up the list. So. Man, motherfucker. Figure that one out. I, yeah, I got don't a feeling know. we're going to get a big old blast of listens because everyone's going to be locked yeah, down in their up. home yeah. and fucking like, we well, might. I can't go out. We might. Might. So whatever. So you know, thanks to all you motherfuckers yeah. for listening. Yeah, we appreciate it. Got some new fucking uh, comments. Yeah. Like, I want to read this first one. Yeah, you want to read the first one? <laughs> yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. I figured you would like this one. I just love the name. Jugs O Fun. <laughs> Jugs of fun, yeah. Jugs of fun, like yes, that. They are. Oh, is that Michael's fucking soul? Right, that's what I was saying. <laughs> or is it Michael? No, I call. Oh, no, Michael, man. That, no, Michael's fucking. I call him tons of fun. But what all if it's him online time. though? I right. call him tons of fun all right, day. Right, I know. So I'm like, oh shit, it's fucking jugs of fun. But yeah, jugs of fun <laughs> says uh, <laughs> I really like the March Mayhem contest you're doing. I wish I was one of three you guys are playing for, and you should have. I'm, no offense, but you should have got in there real quick. Cause That's right. Well, hey, Jugs of Fun, we'll do more of these nah, contests. Jugs of Fun, so. we'll do more stuff for you. And Jugs of oh, Fun, thank, yeah. you, thank you for listening. And I love the way that you uh, made me think of my brother's fat titties. <laughs> 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 Joey, would you like to read the second comment there? Uh, Mike the Viper 810, 810, whichever. Right. <laughs> He commented, uh, CK's the fucking man. I dig his shit more every week. Has he thought about doing a podcast about Bathory or Venom? Yeah. Ven Venom, we did. Yeah, we yeah. did Venom. Yeah. We did Venom. And Bathory would have been cool did, um, on Elizabeth one of the Bathory. But. Earlier, earlier episodes, when we did Venom, 
bath room we haven't done yet. Yeah. Bath room would be good. And yeah, we, we could do that at some point. Yeah, bath room would be. I know neither of uh, none of us are really black metal fans, but bath room would definitely be no, cool. Bathory's yeah, they fucking, were so good. Because that's yeah. fucking going all the way yeah. fucking back. And Quarthon was the fucking, you know, huge like in the beginning monster. of that. So I think that'd be cool, CK. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a good idea. Very cool. CK, you want to read the uh, third one there? I'm um, sure. Death Cloud 420 Smoke said, that weed. This is, the, <laughs> this is the best podcast. I love the true crime meets heavy metal concept. It's so original. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That, that was our goal, is try to do something a little original. That's some, right? Yeah. Yeah, we it wanted to ass. do something different, so we appreciate that. Very, clu- very cool. And the last one... Uh, Betty Lou Simpson, 78, she commented, are you guys ever going to do a podcast about Dahmer, our cream city cannibal? Ah, so she's a Milwaukee. Yeah, you're a Milwaukee resident. Right. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, we're going to do Dahmer eventually. Eventually. We know we are because we're going to get to all of the big ones at at some point, but we try to sprinkle them out as we go. You know, and as we said, go ahead, Cash. Well, I was just going to say, I just noticed that she's only you know from her screen name seems to be a year older than me and yeah. if she's listening and she's single i would love to bang a girl <laughs> named, a girl named yeah. betty lou are you that's serious up, <laughs> betty lou that sounds sexy right that loves cannibalism yeah so if we're off quarantine and we come up to shaker sometime and you're out there i'm gonna meet you yeah i want to meet, meet you <laughs> betty lou <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so don't forget to check out MurderMetalMayhem.com Listen to all the podcasts and bonus content uh, Go check out Murder Metal Mayhem's YouTube channel And subscribe Follow us on Twitter at Get Your Murder On And like us on Facebook And join the 666 Club Support the podcast on the Patreon page That's Patreon.com Slash Murder Metal Mayhem So we appreciate that, guys. You also got the activity book, too? Nah. We got the activity yeah, book. Uh, need that. Been linking to that in the episode description because the coffee table book that should be nowhere near a coffee nowhere table. Nowhere near a coffee table. Been a big hit with the Have listeners. you seen the coffee table on the cover of the book? You're like, yeah. Pretty gross. <laughs> Pretty might gross. Be, might get coronavirus from that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that book might get banned because it promotes the coronavirus. Yeah. Oh, shit. So, uh, speaking of the coronavirus, we're going to be doing oh, a special change up. Next week, we had one in mind, a little vigilante uh, slaying, which is a good one, and we're no, going to no, do it. No, no, great. Yeah, but we've decided because of everything going on. We're going to do it something different just because it fits the setting of life. Right yeah, now, and we're doing the Black Death. Yeah, yeah. we are the yeah. plague. Yeah, so Everybody we're going to be talking about plagues next week and the Black Plague specifically, but uh, with everything going on, it'll be definitely uh, interesting to talk about that. It'll be so fun, that should be dude. good. It'll be fun. So we can't let him go without hearing this new karaoke song. And just like the uh, the the episode is that we're just going to be doing next week, I did this one with all the drama of the coronavirus going on. No, the on. lyric change is great, dude. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. No, the lyric awesome. change is great. Dude. Thanks. I tried to do something different. So this is a parody of a song. And I know that someone else did this already because you sent me the link to yeah, it. I was like, fuck. But like someone but else beat you metal, to it. They but didn't they didn't did. do nah, it, no. my yeah, yeah, they, they didn't, didn't do it metal. They didn't do no. murder metal mayhem No, style. it's they total pussy fucking... version of it. Yeah. So this is the real version. So check this shit out. And until next time, keep one foot in the gutter. And your fist pushing some motherfucking poser at the back. Don't wear a mask, close so I can affect you.
I just want to punch myself in the dick when I hear that. I just want to punch myself in the dick when I hear that. I just want to punch myself in the dick when I hear that. I just want to punch myself in the dick when I hear that. Mother! Mother! Man!